I'm so happy to have my dear brother, almost like really like a nephew to me, I can't say son, like nephew to me, uh, here talking about your book, really continuing a legacy uh, that was begun by your parents who I went to college with at Howard University, uh, and who often I was mistaken for your father, Rahim Al-Ali, uh, Hodari Ali, uh, but he was always doing something good. So whenever people saw me, they thought I was him, Johari Hodari. <laughs> you know, it, it always brought some benefit uh, to me, and I pray that uh, maybe mistaken identity with me brought him some benefit. But today we're talking about your book that's going to bring benefit, I believe, to many, many people, especially young people, Millionaire Manners, The Men's and Boys' Guide to Social Grace in a new age. What motivated you to write this book? Alhamdulillah. First off, Jazakallah for having me. I'm, I'm really, really happy to be here and I appreciate always the, uh, the kind words and sentiment um, and dua, inshallah, for my, uh, for my late father, Rahimullah. Um, but the, the, the motivation was, um, was, was pretty simple on a couple fronts. You know, I have a background in corporate America um, before, I, before I launched my training organization, which we'll get into, and mm -hmm. before I wrote the book. I always found myself mentoring young people and giving them tips and um, advice on, on how to get through life and navigate different situations. So, you know, mashallah, I decided to incorporate all of that advice into one book, and, uh, and hopefully it will, it will serve some benefit to those. Um, you know, I read this, this book. I was, I was captivated. <laughs> but, but not only captivated, but what I found really great is that when I saw the title and I saw the name Sadiq Ali, the first person that I thought about, and you, you, you mentioned your father uh, and your grandmother, I think, in this, but I thought about the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't think of the Prophet Muhammad as having millionaire manners. But when I read through the book, I, even though uh, it doesn't really mention that it talks about the Creator and it talks about uh, good deeds, why did, why did you choose to, to write it in this way? <laughs> I don't believe that. Because um, it, it, Islam is all over the book. Absolutely. But, but for those who know, mm -hmm. but why did you write it kind of, it's a stuff to, it's a stealthily kind of written book. Well, you, I, number one, I wanted you know everyone to be able to benefit you know from the material that's in that book. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to think that oh this is a strictly Islamic sort of erudite written text. Um, it is none of those things. I'm by far not a scholar. Um, I'm a regular husband, father, inshallah, all around good guy. But uh, I, I didn't you know I, I specifically stayed away from certain verbiage, etc. But absolutely, the book was inspired by our dean. Uh, absolutely, anyone from any faith can still benefit from it because we know our book, um, you know, the last message of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, I in mean, the Holy Quran, is uh, very clearly written as a guide for mankind. Um, so in the realm right, of not, not just Muslim kind, not just Muslim, Muslim kind, kind right. absolutely not. So in in the context of writing a book like Millionaire Manners, I wanted it to be able to appeal to as many folks as possible. And uh, and the other key point is the fact that. The beauty of what we know as Muslims is the fact that uh, throughout all the, all the faiths that the world has and has ever known, especially our, our Abrahamic um, triumvirate of, of religions and spirituality, mm -hmm. they all have a basis in morality. Before the religious and, our, and the rituals come mm. into play, there has always been a strong See, basis in morality. Sure you're not a scholar, <laughs> right? That they talk about the Prophet Muhammad and they said that. Before he was a prophet, people called him Ahmed. Hmm? Subhanallah, that he was known to have the best manners. In fact, how could someone believe that he's a prophet if he has bad manners? He comes and says, I'm a prophet. And people say, man, yesterday you, you, you were behaving like this. That the inheritors of the prophets are those who follow 
their example. Absolutely. And so you have really, but you also said something. You said the the um, that this is uh, the Quran is a guidance for all mankind. Well, you meant humankind, but in this book, you really are talking about men. Why? Why are you talking about men in this book, Sadiq? I think that's also a simple, a pretty <laughs> simple answer in the sense that men primarily are the leaders of society. Men are primarily the leaders of their households. Uh, men are the imams of their households. And especially from a young man's standpoint, mm. which is why I wanted to make sure that I included <clears throat> information in the book for young men uh, who are coming of age and in the process of becoming leaders, inshallah. Now, I want to start for a minute because, you know, we have a problem now in society where people would take issue with what you just said. Mm. Men are the leaders of the... And then, okay, statistically... I said foremost, <laughs> for, primarily. For, pri primarily. Um, but th there is a tremendous movement now uh, as a result of, of a couple of decades of Title IX uh, to really promote girls, mean in. The girls have to get together and we're going to move girls forward because the society and its discrimination against women has left them so far behind. But your book, you're trying to put men to come forward. Can you talk a little bit about, is, is there some crisis that you're responding to? <laughs> um, I just last evening, um, alhamdulillah, I had the, uh, had the pleasure of doing a radio interview on Morgan's radio station, WEAA 88.9. And just last evening, the host of that radio show, Anthony McCarthy, he asked me a question. He says, he asked me, basically along to paraphrase, um, why now? You know, why, why is this book needed now? Mm. Um, and really, it's a twofold answer. So I'll answer your question by um, <laughs> telling you what I, how I answered uh, Anthony okay. McCarthy's okay. question. Um, I think there's two issues. I think, number one, there's the issue of gentlemen and manhood. And then there's the issue of good manners, good adab in general, which are supposed to be embraced by men and women alike. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, the issue of Title IX, et cetera, is really no issue. L let women do additional things, as they should, um, as they're able within the confines of our, of our book, our example of Rasulullah that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's no issue with that. On the front of gentle men and manhood, I think there is a crisis mm -hmm. on our hands, or at least the, we have the beginnings of a crisis. And I don't think that is anyone's particular fault. What I told Anthony last night is the fact that I, I believe that, um, and which is why partly I titled the book uh, Social Grace in the New Age. The New mm -hmm. Age refers mm -hmm. to the fact that because of technology, just because of um, the bombardment that we have of information of all different types, um, there is, we are more distracted now than ever before. So it is not that we necessarily value good manners and some of these principles any less than we might have in the past. Mm -hmm. It is a fact that we've gone away from teaching them and emphasizing them as a way t to not only be successful, um, as we know, in this life, but also successful in the next. You know, I'm, uh, we're going to close. Um, I highly uh, recommend this book. I've been, been fascinated by, by reading it. And... I'm going to use my pulpit while you use your social media network to get people on point with improving uh, what what we call in the Islamic terminology husnul khuluq, mm. the best character, the best behavior. And we know that the Prophet وسلم, he was the best example in every way he had good manners. Alhamdulillah, it opened doors, it opened kingdoms, it opened hearts. And so I would invite you to get people from your pulpit. Uh, you have a Twitter uh, or... We do, we do. Um, we're actually on all the social media, Alhamdulillah. Um, so on Twitter, our Twitter account, uh, I'm, I'm guessing it'll flash in the bottom here, inshallah. Um, but our Twitter account is M-L-L-N-R-E Manners. So short for Millionaire Manners. Um, that's at M L L N R E Manners on Twitter, on Instagram is at Millionaire Manners, and on Facebook as well it is uh, Millionaire Manners Academy, uh, which is our training organization where we teach these um, these skills that are in the book to uh, nonprofit organizations, alternative schools, um, and also reentry programs. So when we have folks coming back home from being incarcerated, um, they have we're teaching them skills to be productive in society. Subhanallah, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about. Um, 
your program later. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bless you and your work. And inshallah, that you'll help all of us inshallah. in this life and to get to the best place in the next by having William and Manage. Inshallah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.